Real quick before we jump to this video guys, I'm just here in Work for World Headquarters. As you can see, we are fully stocked up on all the shirts, old designs, new designs. We even brought back a couple of designs. Regardless, as you guys know, fuel prices are through the roof and we want to be able to give back to you guys, the blue collar community, because well, in my mind, the blue collar community uses some of the most fuel in the country. I mean, it's not like we can just grab a wheelbarrow and our shovel and hop on a city bus, nor would we really want to. So in an effort to give back to you guys, we are doing another cash giveaway and this cannot be better timing to hopefully help you guys out. So for the next 48 hours, every order that comes into workforapparel.com we're going to be throwing cash into every single order. So make sure you guys get your orders in. Big, small, t-shirt, hat, decal, uh, billet bottle opener. Doesn't matter how much you spend. Every single order is going to get cash in it. So workforapparel.com. There's a link down in the description. There's probably going to be one right there. Let's roll to this video. What's up and good morning, guys. Welcome back to another video. We are jumping back on the mini truck trailer project here. And I mean, I don't even know if we can say jumping back on. We haven't even gotten to the trailer portion yet. The last uh, video that we did, we got the old trailer hitch all nice and done and welded up there and she looks absolutely beautiful and then all of you guys blew up the comment section saying ryan it would be so cool if you built a gooseneck trailer for this thing and for something like this i see absolutely like zero reason to build a gooseneck over a bumper pole trailer for the mini truck other than the fact that it would be cool and we all know that's probably going to be the deciding factor as to why I'm about to announce that uh, <laughs> I think we're going to end up building a gooseneck trailer for this thing. Oh man, so basically I don't want to say all that work for nothing because we can actually still use this thing to move trailers around if we need it, but I think, uh, I think we're going to shift gears here and we're actually going to start building a gooseneck trailer for this thing. That is assuming I don't go to like the steel yard which we're about to go to in a minute here and like poop myself because the prices are so crazy high because um, it is. You know, we got to build the whole actual neck part of the gooseneck that drops onto the bed. And that's a lot more steel than a standard bumper size um, or bumper pole trailer size, I should say. I've been doing, you know, a little bit of research, a little bit of internet purchasing. I figured out how I'm going to do the axles on this thing because obviously I don't want like standard trailer axles where they're super, super wide. I don't want like ATV trailer axles because they're not wide enough. So I found this kit where we can kind of build our own axles. So I think we're going to end up doing that. And that way we can mimic the width of the trailer to the actual width of the axle that's on the truck. That way nothing looks too goofy. Cause we all know, you know, we're building something for the ranch. It's gonna get worked. We gotta make it look good though. So I'm just kind of jumping into this without like too crazy of a plan. I'm gonna grab a couple of measurements right now and then we're heading to the steel yard. We've also got my 110 in the old bed of the truck here today because well, we were out riding the other day at the track and putting in some sick lap times. And well, I think I overrode the old bike here and my swing arm nut backed its way off. And as you guys can see, uh, yeah, the swing arm basically walked its way off. Thank God I noticed it and it didn't really like the bolt didn't back out until after I had landed and was coming into a turn. And then all of a sudden the whole bike was like all, you know, loosey goosey because the swing arm's not really attached, but that could have been really bad. So we're going to take that in today to get fixed. Um, and the reason I'm actually dropping it off and not just putting a nut on myself is because, well, because I've also got the, uh, 134, 132, I forget exactly what it is. Big bore kit that's going to go on it and it's going to make up for having those super swamper, uh, 40s that are on the thing and that thing this bike actually that's my first time actually taking that bike out other than putting around um on the pavement here uh as sluggish as i thought it was going to be because of the giant tires that i put on the thing the thing still rips so i can only imagine once we get the old big bore kit on here this thing's going to be a super fun bike i mean it already is but i think it's just going to take it to that next level this thing feels like you're riding an 80 like the size of it with the swing arm the forks everything like I love that bike. Now you guys know when I need steel, I come to our friends over at JC Ornamental and Metal Supply. What's up, dude? <laughs> How you doing, bro? I'm looking for some steel. What's up, man? You know where I can get some? <laughs> yeah. How, how are you, buddy? JC Metal Supply. <laughs> there you go. Looks like we're still well stocked up. We are. So, yeah. So you guys know, big proponent, small business. How's uh, how's the world treating you guys? You know what? Um, it's picking up. That's we're good. We're doing pretty good. You know, we do our part customers will show up well so you know pricing is yeah. what's going to determine how we're building this trailer today here yeah so let's see we got any we got we got two by four by eighth inch or is that like well that'd be two by six right no, this one right here is two by four right there okay yeah what about where what we got here is this two by three that's uh two by three 16 gauge 16 we got eighth inch of two by three i'm already over building this thing i don't want it to weigh like more than the truck can tow just as the trailer itself before we put anything on it. This is only frame, right? It's gonna be the outside frame will be two by three. Uh -huh. And then two by two is going across, is my plan. It doesn't okay. have to be. It could be two by two the whole thing. So Christian helped me decide on exactly how we're gonna build this thing. We've got some inch and a half by three, somewhere around there, inch and a half by three. Um, that's gonna be the edges of the trailer. Now this is gonna be again, way overkill for what we're building, but I want it to look cool. So I want my edges to be thicker, like a standard like gooseneck or you know deck over trailer would be. 
and then we've got inch and a half by inch and a half. That's going to be our crossbars that are going to connect the two sides. So right now our only decision is do we make it 10 foot or do we make it 12 foot? If we make it 10 foot, then we know we get, uh, you know, uh, one piece here gets us two sides. If we go 12 foot, now we need two pieces. A huge thank you to Christian and the guys over at JC Ornamental Iron. It's actually going to be JC Metal here soon. They're going through a bunch of rebranding, but if you guys are local, make sure you guys check them out. Not only do they always have what I need in stock, but they also have the best pricing in town. So make sure you guys check them out and get set up with them now because these guys are blowing up. They're getting bigger. A lot of places around them that sold steel are closing down and these guys are still going strong. All right, guys, so don't laugh at me, but here's my quick little sketch. Totally not to scale. The axles aren't gonna actually be where they looks like the tires are, but a pretty simple concept. I've never built a trailer, but how hard could it be? Great thing is it ain't going on the roads or the highways. So it's not like we got to worry about anything that, you know, different that would come up not that i really think you'd have to think of anything different other than like brakes or lights or anything like that but we did opt to go with 12 foot here because i don't want the trailer to look goofy i've seen a lot of guys make fifth wheel trailers for like power wheels and stuff for the kids which are super rad i've actually always wanted to do that for my nephew but i've seen some where it's just like it looks goofy and they didn't do it like to scale or anything like that it, it, i don't know i don't want this to look like that so the mini truck itself i don't even know i mean the bed's eight foot we got another, what, four there. So the mini truck itself's 12 foot. Let's do a little double check here. We'll pull the tape measure and see we got, oof, mini truck is 13 foot. So again, you know, we're just kind of gonna make this up as we go. This isn't all the steel that we need, but it's enough to get the deck built, start to get the actual neck portion built. And then from there, I'll have a little more deciding to do and measuring, and then we'll know how much more steel we need to actually get. But I'm excited to actually get this build underway. I've always wanted to build some sort of trailer. So we went with inch and a half by three inches. This is gonna wrap the entire outside of the trailer. Then we're gonna use our inch and a half that's gonna sit inside of here. And those are gonna be our crossbars. That should leave me enough room up on top here to be able to put a wood deck on here and the wood still sit below the top edge here. So I want it to look like my real deck over trailer that I have. And then I think I'm actually gonna put like steak pockets going down the side of this thing. Like I, I wanna make it cool. Enough talking about it, let's start building. If we measure the width of the mini truck here, we are at 58 inches. So that's what I want the overall finished trailer width to be. That way again, it doesn't look goofy behind the mini truck here is like a, you know, eight foot wide deck, which means we've got inch and a half material here. So we're gonna call that three inches by the time we have our two outside pieces. So we need to subtract three inches from 58 and that's gonna give us our dimension to cut our cross pieces. Out. Now we're gonna be using the cold cut saw here today. Um, it's just too many repetitive cuts to use the bandsaw. If you guys have never used one of these, they have actual teeth, like a wood saw blade. Now they call it a cold cut saw. Um, I know there's other names for it, but basically it's not like an abrasive wheel like you saw over at JC Ornamental. We're using an abrasive cutoff wheel. It sparks like crazy. It gets super hot. It's messy. Um, the blades can break. Sketchy things happen when those blades break. These right here, this is the way to go. Um, everybody always tells me I need to buy the Milwaukee abrasive cutoff saw. I don't want it until Milwaukee comes out with a version uh, like this, a cold cut saw. It's so much nicer to cut stuff this way than with an abrasive wheel. Now, the only thing to note with these saws is the blades are usually metal specific. So this is actually a multi material blade, but they have certain blades for stainless, certain blades for aluminum. And if you're not using the right blade, you can totally jack the blade up and these blades are not cheap. So it's the only downside to this saw is you kind of have to change the blade based on material. Albeit this is a multi-material blade, so I'm sure it like works halfway decent with a bunch of different stuff. Anyways, let's get to cutting here. So all of our crossbars are gonna be 55 inches. So we'll get that marked right here. Load her up in the saw, clamp her down. Now this saw is Zach's and the only annoying thing is there's no like flip this lever up so you can quick adjust the actual little clamp here. And you guys can see just how nice that was. No sparks, no like weird burrs on your metal because you've like melted it with the uh, abrasive saw. And you can see like I can hold that and touch that and that's not hot at all. I'm telling you guys, these cold cut saws make super quick work out of cutting steel. So I've got eight of my inch and a half by inch and a half cross supports cut here. Now I'm gonna cut um, the same dimension out of this inch and a half by three and that's gonna be for the front and for the rear. It's either we mire the corners and we get a nice clean corner or I butt this in and then we gotta cap the end. All right, I've decided we're gonna give mitering this a shot. So let's loosen this up and see how this saw adjusts. I've never, never used this saw to do a miter cut. Let's pull this out of here. Now, it's where things get a little, a little funky. 
We'll double check. We'll put a square up in the corner here. We'll double check it with the blade to make sure we are true 45. Now when you're mitering steel, things sometimes get a little weird. Sometimes pieces get thrown. You gotta be kind of careful, make sure there's no tension on the blade. Oh, no. So that didn't cut all the way through just based on where the miter sits, the blade diameter, whatever. Uh, I don't think this thing's meant to cut three inches down this way on a miter, but obviously it doesn't have a flop. So it's not like we can cut the miter that way like on a uh, wood miter saw. So it looks like we're gonna be finishing that by hand. Now, unfortunately, I still have not gotten a new blade for the old bandsaw here, but she should have enough life left in her for this little bit we're gonna do today. So now we pull our 55 inches from long. Ooh, actually it's gonna be longer than 55. It's gonna be our 58 inches. Glad that just went through my head right there, or this could have been bad. So this is gonna be to our long side, 58 inches. And then just so I like visually when I'm over here, even though that ends over there, I know that this miter needs to be cut that way. Obviously that line's not accurate. That just tells me once I get it loaded into the saw that we've gotta make sure that that's the angle the saw is gonna cut. That way you don't end up cutting like a parallelogram or anything like that because you're in a rush. Now y'all probably mentioned it when you saw me cutting this and then having to cut it with the bandsaw earlier, but sometimes my brain works, sometimes it shut off. Earlier my brain shut off. Then my brain started working again and I realized all I gotta do is space this out a little further off of the actual like rest plate back there um, or whatever you call that. And then this thing will cut all the way through. So just use a little piece of scrap back there. She cuts all the way through. We're able to get everything cut without having to use the bandsaw now. And uh, we're ready to just kind of lay this thing out. Oh, man, the supervisor showed up. You gonna x-ray my welds and make sure everything's good? Of course. You gonna get this DOT approved for me? Of course. And by DOT approved, we just put another work for it license plate on it. We're, we're yeah, gonna go? Exactly. All right, perfect. <laughs> Now, just to give you guys an idea of kind of how the layout's gonna work here, obviously nothing's squared up yet. I mean, you can see that corner right there has not even made it up. There's a weird bow in the floor right here, so it's not allowing me to square things up, which means I'm gonna have to pull the mini truck out, get to a flatter spot in the floor here before I actually get this thing welded. Wish I had time to weld it today, but unfortunately we still gotta take the 110 to the mechanic, get that all dialed in, so. Good news is though, all of our cuts are done. That means tomorrow when we come in here, we just get this thing all clamped up and then we get to do some welding, which that's always the fun part. The cutting, grinding, cleaning up, all that. That's not the fun part. Just gluing the metal together, that's the fun part. See you guys in the morning. We are back. Today's the day. We're gonna get this thing all nice and welded up. Um, I've been doing some research online. I was originally gonna go with a non-leaf sprung axle setup just because it's gonna be for the ranch. It's never gonna be on the road. Zach guilted me out of that and said, nah, man, you gotta throw that thing on leaf spring. So I think I found the leaf spring kit that I need. Um, again, we've got the axle kit. So we just gotta get all of that here and we can start worrying about that. So I've already gone ahead and marked out my layout, which you will see right there. That's where all of these cross supports are gonna go. Then I went ahead and picked up um, a 90 degree corner clamp. This is a pretty small one. I don't know if it's gonna do what I want it to do, but I gotta make sure that all of these corners are actually squared up. And unfortunately, I forgot my big framing square at home, so we don't have that. So we've got 90 degree clamps, a speed square, and we can measure the corners. And I think with all that, we can get this thing pretty nice and squared up. Like I mentioned earlier, this part of the floor is all kind of funky and weird, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the mini truck back here, scooch the forklift up over there, and I think this is a nice flat part of the floor right here. And we're gonna use that part of the floor right there to get this thing, um, you know, at least sitting somewhat flat while we weld it up. So I've gotten our perimeter frame here laid out. Let's give these uh, old 90 degree clamps here a little, a little test. I mean, they're perfectly out of the way, so that's good. Like I said earlier, they're a little small for what we're doing here. Seems like you gotta finagle them a little bit. Now, if I were a betting man, I'd be willing to bet just in that, you know, three and a half inches there. We didn't really true up that side as being um, 90 degrees, but the thing that's gonna help me do is I'm gonna tack, tack, probably tack down there, and then uh, 
and then we'll be able to kind of finagle from there, but at least this will hold it at a 90-ish. So you can see when dealing with, uh, you know, putting those corners basically square to about that three inch mark on the clamps, if you look over at this side, we're nowhere near square. Obviously those would line up perfectly if we were. Um, that's why we only tacked over there. That was just to get that corner basically as trued up as we can. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get this side good, clamp one side, do my diagonal measuring, see how true and square we actually are. Yeah, I don't think I'm so old on those uh, 90 degree corner clamps for a project this big. the entire perimeter welded here and one thing with welding is you're using heat and heat shrinks and pulls and pushes and does all kinds of weird things so something like this um, even though we had it pretty much perfectly squared once you start welding things start to get a little bit funky I don't know the exact science to how much stuff moves or how to really prevent it on something this big where we didn't really have a way to clamp her down I went ahead and welded up all the edges as well as the tops and the insides right there. Now again, I'm not a welder, but when you got a pretty nice miller here, it just, you know, it sticks metal together. I could have just left the exposed welds, but I like on edges and stuff like this to make it look like it's one solid piece. So I went ahead and ground down the top as well as this corner. Um, obviously inside, it's not worth even trying to get in there to grind it out. So we just did kind of halfway decent welds in there. Next up on the docket is we got to get all of our cross supports welded in. My original plan was I was just going to set this on the ground, basically use the ground and maybe a shim or two to get it to sit flush. Because obviously we want it to flush out with one side. So either we do it up here and we call this the bottom, wherever the bottom is, this piece needs to sit flush with. Hey man, you want to see if a magnet will hold this? Come on, man, you can do it, buddy. No, these ones are smaller, They're weaker. Let's see. Try, try it again. Oh, try, try it again. again. Okay. Try it again. Give it a little love tap. Man. Just a little love tap. Maybe like that side on first. Give it a little tap. A little tap tap? A little tap 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 a wee. A little tap tap, then it all goes to hell. Don't tap too hard. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Love it when a plan comes together, even though we don't really plan things around here. Also, you guys are watching. You guys want to get a t-shirt, hat, sweatshirt, key tag, decal, whatever you want. Work for apparel.com, you know, we got sweet shirts like this. Wearing this shirt in honor of Dedic today, you know, the old square body shirt. Yeah, that's sweet, okay. He was out here halfway weirdly welding stuff together and it stuck. So if his stuff can stick, our stuff can stick.
Alrighty y'all, so we've got pretty much everything on top here is nice and welded, which means we need to go for the flip. Now I do need to add another piece of the front there and a piece of the rear. That way we can uh, screw off the ends of our boards once we actually deck this thing. It's something I didn't think of when I was cutting all these pieces. So two more pieces need to get cut for that, but Zach's over here. I'm just checking your welds. Zach, you're like the lightest guy. Jeez. <laughs> oh, there, therefore I don't hit the ground hard. Fair. Well, since we're all here, let's see how heavy this thing is. I really hope the mini truck can tell this once we're all done, but uh... It's not even close to being done. Yeah, we still got a lot more steel and the, the wood decking. Wood, the wood's probably going to weigh more than the steel. Yeah. Do you like think projects out? Or do you just How long have you known me? <laughs> how long have you known me? Fair enough. No, I don't think anything <laughs> out. Ready boys? Chris, your, your back's still good? Or your knees or whatever the heck's broken this week? See I have. I'll, I'll make sure you're done. Great work, Zach. So even though Zach's here in his pajamas, you know, right to work, right to work, he's gonna pull this window out. We're gonna send this window off with Chris to Chris's buddy who owns a glass company. He's actually the one that made the mirrors for the gym at the ranch. And hopefully they can mimic this. If you guys see, there is a slight radius to it. See right there, it's not too bad. I think it's possible. And then if not, worst case scenario, Little, little plexiglass or acrylic or whatever, and it just makes that bend. We'll see. You're doing great, buddy. Oh, I missed it. Don't lose a finger. Oh, look at that, too. They even sealed it with plastic, like a real, like a real car. Yeah. These are actually kind of cool colored door panels for P4. We could easily repair these. Get some freshies, some leather. Get it, Zach. Get it, buddy. Bite it. Chris said bite it for some reason. Dude, he, he worries me sometimes. All right, buddy, is she gonna come out? Oh, uh, uh. Oh, look at that. Oh, don't break it. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to. I feel like we're gonna break something here. It won't come out? No. There's no the clear? Way, the way the hinge is, it does it hits. You're, you're out. No, yeah, but the bracket's stuck, so there's a little, like, lip. On the... Yeah. Were the window bolts on the Yeah, thing? so it's, it's somewhat... Oh, it's I got it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. 25 years of dust right there, boys. Whatever you do, don't drop it. <laughs> Look, that's, a, that's an official... Ching Yong little thing right there, seal of approval from China. DOT approved. I'm oh, sure. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm sure we didn't just print that on there. All right, Chris. I need a driver's side I'll one of these. That, I'll pick that up some more. Zach, how can we get this off? Uh, you don't? No. Uh, Chris, it comes with this. Yeah, Zach says you don't get that off. Um, yeah, they get templated with that. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. All right. Damn. Uh.